So good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the first in uh, the 21-22 school year uh, webinar series for Discover Tennessee History. Um, we did this last year, um, and it was a lot of fun, uh, and we got a lot of good feedback, so we decided we would try this again for this school year. Um, so for our first session, uh, we have with us our partners from Tennessee History Day, and I'm going to turn things over to them in just a moment. But before I do that, a couple of quick housekeeping things. Uh, a couple of uh, best practices. Uh, we are recording this, so if you would keep your mics muted uh, and you can, of course, rename yourself. Uh, we do want this to be interactive, though. So again, use your chat function um, and also your reaction buttons as well. Um, and for those who might be watching this recording later on, uh, please feel free to leave us comments um, either on our YouTube channel or in the survey that we'll talk about here at the end. Um, we also have a Padlet, and this is something that you can go to for resources for things mentioned in today's session, as well as all the other sessions in the series, both for this school year and for last school year. So again, it's a great kind of one-stop shop for everything that we have done uh, in this series. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn things over to our uh, presenters today. Uh, so Nikki Ward is going to be uh, representing Tennessee History Day. Hi, you guys. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, let me get my screen going here. So I have a few tabs open at the top that we'll talk about later about some resources that we have available to you. Um, but what I'm going to be spending my time talking about today is just in general, what is Tennessee History Day? Uh, and walking you through what a project looks like, what the contest looks like if you choose to participate in the contest, and uh, how you can get plugged into History Day here in Tennessee. So um, first of all, if you are new to History Day, I'd love to know that. So if you don't mind sharing in the chat where you're from, and if you have done anything with History Day before, even if it's not a competition, if you're completely new, I'd love to know that as well. I'm joined today by Tori. Uh, she's the assistant state coordinator and she'll be sharing some of the categories with you later. So um, History Day itself is an opportunity for students to actively participate in history rather than passively learn it. I know that everyone here is a good history educator and none of your students are doing passive learning in your class, um, but this is one way for you to be able to get them to engage in the process of historical research and historical analysis. We're gonna talk about what is National History Day. I'm gonna tell you about the contest itself, um, the theme information, category options for your students, entry information, and just some classroom tips, as well as resources and what region you might be in. So the Tennessee Historical Society is the um, institution that runs Tennessee History Day, the state uh, program. And we do other things too. Uh, History Day is our biggest program. It's what I'm in charge of, but we also produce the Tennessee Historical Quarterly. Uh, we have public programs and lectures and um, we house the Tennessee Encyclopedia of History and Culture on our website, things like that. So if you are interested in receiving the quarterly or uh, receiving emails about programs that we do, we have a special educator membership if you would like to join. Just email me and let me know. I'm not going to play the sample project just because it can be difficult with different internet access, but Tori does have a link to a YouTube video that is an example of a senior documentary. Uh, this student went to nationals this past year and she won a special award for her work on orography and its relation to communication and history. The last year's theme was communication and history, the key to understanding. I'm not going to play it. I'm going to move forward. <laughs> yeah. um, so in general, what is National History Day? Uh, History Day is a year-long education program or framework for students in grades 6 through 12 that focuses on project-based learning. It's an opportunity for students to learn history by engaging in hands-on historical research on a topic in which they are interested, and it's an exploration of any topic in world, national, state, or local history. Um, some of our best projects that go on to state and nationals are on local subjects. So it's getting kids really plugged into their community and they become very passionate about the things that they're learning. So why choose to do National History Day in your classroom? Um, students who participate in History Day 
uh, often show better test scores and gain skills they'll need in college or if they are moving on to the workforce. NHD did a study about students that participated in History Day versus the general population and the skills that they saw in History Day students versus the general population. And um, if you maybe need help getting your administration to buy in, feel free to access that report. Um, there's some pretty good information about um, from the national level about why History Day is helpful. It also teaches higher order thinking skills. It meets the Tennessee Department of Education, social studies standards and social studies practices. And it offers a framework that you can implement in your classroom in which students have the ability to make choices in their own learning. So it offers an opportunity for self-regulatory skills and a little bit of autonomy that can be hard to gain um, in class sometimes. So how do students participate? They can enter in the junior division or the senior division. Junior is grades six through eight. Uh, senior is nine through 12. Students then compete at the school level. Uh, if you decide to have a school level competition, they uh, could go to the district competition if they're in Northeast Tennessee. I can explain that a little bit later. Otherwise, they'll go straight to regional. Then if they place um, first or second there, they go to state and then to the national contest. And how they present their findings is the really kind of magical part of History Day, in my opinion. They get to pick how they relay the research that they do. So they can either do a documentary, an exhibit, a performance, website, or paper. They can either do this as an individual or in groups of two to five. Paper is the only one that is individual only. And then once again, it's in the junior and senior division. And this is just a little bit of how, about how it looks. Um, if you have a district contest that you'll participate that in November, regionals take place in February and March. The state contest is in April. And then the National um, History Day competition is in June in DC, in uh, University of Maryland. There is a set of rules that students are, um, if they are competing in the contest, have to follow. And the rule book is available online. I have it posted just about everywhere I can think. And um, Tori also has the link for you. She can share in the chat. Um, but this is the digital rule book. If you would like a hard copy, I know a lot of teachers do, um, you can reach out to me and request uh, curriculum for this year. And I'm happy to send you one. So let's look at the process of a History Day student. Uh, the cycle starts in August when you come back to school and um, you'll pick a topic that's related to the theme of the year. You'll workshop with your teachers, maybe go to the library, find resources, keeping track of everything that you're using. You'll work on your thesis, decide how you want to present this project and continue working on it until um, a competition using those rules and rubrics provided. You go to the contest, judges give you feedback, and then you use that feedback to revise your work. Even if you don't move on to the next level of competition, we always encourage students to make some changes to their work afterwards because you're putting into practice that feedback. And uh, that's one of the skills you gain from History Day is reading other people's insight into your work and suggestions and thinking about how to apply that to the work that you've done. Now, how do students select their topics? It is their choice, um, local, national, world history. The key to it is, is it connected to the uh, theme for the year? And is their historical perspective available on their topic? So students through their project are tasked with explaining the topic's relationship to the theme and its significance in history. They don't have to address both aspects generally, but oftentimes it lends itself to both. And if you can do both through your work, that's better. So what is history in the context of History Day? We suggest that students need to go at least 20 years into the past. Um, if it's difficult to demonstrate historical perspective for really recent topics that might still be unfolding. So if historians haven't really written about it or provided historical perspective, it's likely not a very good idea for an NHG topic just yet. If it's a recent historical topic, sometimes students can look further back and contextualize it within something, a larger historical work, um, and bring that topic in, in, in a way. 
NHD did host a theme webinar for this year and the recording is available online. So the theme for this year is debate and diplomacy in history, successes, failures, and consequences. They provide a really wonderful theme book. This is just a little bit of an excerpt, I'm not gonna read it to you, <laughs> um, but they provide lesson plans and um, ideas for what debate and diplomacy could look like in your students' work. Because sometimes these topics can be really difficult for students to wrap their heads around. So they offer you kind of tools to help them understand what the theme is, and then um, kind of ideas for how to access theme uh, ideas as well. So we're gonna talk a little bit more in depth about the category options that are available to students. Uh, Tori is going to uh, share now as well. So Tori, do you want me to just click through or do you want to jump in and share your screen? Um, you can click through. Okay. That's good. Okay. All right. Um, so the first um, category that we're going to talk a little bit about is documentary. Um, I'm just going to read what the rule book definition of documentary is. Um, and it says a documentary is an audio visual presentation that uses multiple source types, such as images, video, and sound to communicate a historical argument, research, and interpretation of your topic's significance in history. Um, this, as well as all the other categories, will require a process paper and a, a annotated bibliography. Um, these are uh, these documentaries will be uploaded to SmugMug, which is the way that we um, kind of gather all of the projects in one place, all of the documentary projects. Um, and who should compete in documentary? Um, mainly students who have a grasp of how images and sound work together to um, tell a story or a narrative. Um, and students who have technical skills, of course, um, and skills to use footage and audio and things like that and be able to put it together. Um, for group projects, uh, as Nikki mentioned, you can do this individually or in a group. This would be a good one for a group because um, especially if it's harder for the students to meet in person together, um, you can kind of access your, your work from anywhere as long as you have internet or something like that. Um, so uh, that one's a good one, especially if we're looking at a virtual um, contest. And documentaries must be no more than uh, 10 minutes. Um, in length, and that includes the source credits at the end, which are typically really quick. Um, and uh, you can go ahead and go to the next one now. Okay. All right, so website. Um, a website is a collection of interconnected web pages that uses multimedia to communicate your historical argument, research, and interpretation of your topic's significance in history. Uh, websites must be constructed using um, NHD's official website editor, which is uh, NHD Web Central. Um, and the paper and annotated bibliography are uh, to be embedded in the website. So it's not two separate uh, uploads, I guess. You can, it'll all be in the, in the website together. Um, students can use professional photographs, graphics, videos, uh, recorded music within the site, um, but all of that stuff will have to be credited in the site and also in the annotated uh, bibliography as well. Um, who should compete in the website category? Uh, again, kind of similar to the documentary, students who have technical skills um, and students who have a strong grasp of language and of course students who are organized. And again, for groups, um, this is a really good uh, category to do if students want to be in a group because again you can access your work from anywhere um, if it's for some reason difficult to meet up uh, in person. So you can go to the next one now. Okay and then there's paper. Um, a paper is a written format for presenting your historical argument research and uh, your topic significance in history. Um, this is the only category that has to be done individually so there are no group papers. Um, so for who should compete in this uh, category, definitely students who work better individually or who would just prefer to work individually. Um, this is a really good category for them. Um, students who have a strong grasp of language, of course, and of course, students who are organized, which I guess is a given for all of the categories. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's all I have for that. I'll 
throw it over back to Nikki now for the other two categories. All right, so let's talk about exhibit a little bit. It's a three-dimensional physical and visual representation of a student's historical argument, uh, their research and interpretation of their topic significance and history. Um, if you are new to History Day, this isn't going to make sense to you, but this year it is the same as last year in that, um, and I didn't speak to this before, we are looking at this year as if it is both, as if it is an in-person and a virtual year because this year has been unpredictable. <laughs> and so we are just trying to move forward with the best plan that we can, hoping to be in person and working with students and seeing students at an in-person contest but just making sure we're prepared in case that's not an option. So what that means is that all of these submissions, especially ones that are normally a physical object like an exhibit, will need to be digitized in some capacity. So for exhibit, what that means is if you have students that prefer to make the board, which most of them do, you will need to take pictures of that board and then send in your copy of what each section of the board says. You can see there's a certain amount of words 500 word limit on the board of student written words. So um, there is a very specific layout of how History Day wants you to do this that they have shared with us for this year for virtual submission. Um, and if you have your copy somewhere, it should not be that difficult to just move it over and then take some really clear photos of each section of the exhibit itself so that the focus of their work is making the board itself. Um, who should compete in exhibit? Students who are visually creative that really like the drama of the exhibit piece itself. Students who have time and materials to construct a large physical exhibit. Um, there is a piece called reasonable help that students are allowed to have a reasonable amount of help with things that um, they normally can't, like they can't use power tools on their own just yet. But they need to design the board. They need to be the one kind of taking charge of the plan and then receiving reasonable help from adults. Groups, uh, this is good for groups who can meet and work together in person. Media devices are permitted, but within reason, and there are very specific rules for that in the rule book. There is an option to do a digital exhibit and essentially they would make a really large um, digital page essentially and zoom in and treat it like it's a exhibit board itself. And there's uh, directions for how to do that and rules on the size and limit of what their exhibit size should be um, on our Padlet that we'll share a little bit later. Some more examples of an exhibit. You can see um, the student, they really get into like three-dimensional stuff. Um, and they really like to showcase creativity through exhibit. The exhibit hall is a really neat place to, to uh, see students work in action. And then performance. A performance is a dramatic portrayal of your historical argument, research, and inter interpretation of your topic, significance, and history. Who should compete in performance? Students who have the time to do the research and to craft their research into a performance. So they are creating that uh, script and the story that they're telling through the historical research that they do. Students who have an understanding of narrative and um, students who enjoy performing. Groups, uh, this is a good one for groups because they get to work together on the script and then perform together, but it's also really good independently too. Your performance cannot exceed 10 minutes in length. Media devices are permitted within reason, so projection, sound, lighting, et cetera. The caveat is it needs to be something you can carry with you to competition. So you can't have a full professional lighting situation um, if you are, in, if we're having a virtual year for some reason, because that's not something you can take with you to a competition. Students will have five minutes beforehand to set up and introduce their project, and then five minutes after to take it down, and then they'll be interviewed with the judges. Assistance in producing costumes and props is allowed, but students must choose fabrics, um, do the designs, all of that themselves. Once again, that reasonable help comes into play. This year, you will need to record your performance and submit it to Smug Mug online. It needs to be one take with no post editing, so no green screens and things like that, because you're literally just recording your performance. You can see the pictures in the background here. Um, students are in front of just a, a curtain on a stage. So we're going into it with the mindset of this is our just in case recording 
And it needs to be following NHD guidelines in that students can't have, you know, if you're not going to take a couch with you to your regional competition, you shouldn't be using a couch at home in your recorded performance. And something that Tori had mentioned with website is the process paper and annotated bibliography. So these are both critical components of your student's project. All categories are required to have a process paper and annotated bibliography. You can have all the sources in the world in your bibliography, but if it's not evident in your student work, it can often cause a ding on the rubric that I'll show you a little bit later. Um, the process paper essentially describes the story of how the student did their research, what sparked their interest, what was their most useful primary source? How did they refine their research? Um, there are specific questions you see below that students need to answer in their paper. Judges are encouraged to read this first. Don't forget to spend time on this because this is essentially your first introduction to a project. Um, so how did you choose your topic? How does it relate to the annual theme? How did you conduct your research? How did you create the project? What is your historical argument? And in what ways is your topic significant in history? So sometimes you'll see students spend a lot of time like this is what my argument is, but then that's not evident in their research and their project itself. This is a great time for students to self reflect on the work that they've done and make sure everything's in alignment with what is their what is their argument is that seen in the work itself that they're submitting to the judges. And then your bibliography is divided into primary and secondary resources. It's annotated, which sometimes provides a challenge. Um, students often want to just tell us what the resource is, but my best advice is to have these questions you need to cover open next to you as you proofread your bibliography. So what we're asking students is, how was this source used? How did the source help your understanding of your topic? Not what is the source? We should know what the source is through not only the citation itself, but how you used it in your project. So this is your opportunity to say, this source was really helpful in helping me understand how this relates to the larger context, or this source actually confused me a lot because it was really different than everything else I've been reading about this topic. So it's your opportunity to really explain how your research went and how this source helped your research um, produce the project that you made. NHD does have a sample annotated bibliography available online, and uh, that's linked right there for you, but it's also on our Padlet page. Okay, so I'm going to talk through a few tips for educators. Um, if you have any, um, if you are, you know, old to history day and you have some um, suggestions, throw those in the chat for us. But some things to keep in mind, documentary and exhibit are the most popular categories, which means we have a lot of entries there. We have fewer participants enter performance in the website category. So if you have a student that maybe is motivated and move on to the next level of competition, uh, that's something to keep in mind. Students can never have enough primary sources. It is important, however, that they rely not just on photographs, but they really do that work to find primary sources that are written. The Library of Congress uh, and Teaching with Primary Sources are a wonderful resource for this. Make sure projects have a really clear thesis and that the relation to the theme is evident. That is part of the rubric that I'll talk a little bit about later. And if it's not clear, it can be hard for the judges to score them well. Prepare your students for the judging process. It will save you time on the back end if you make sure the students are familiar with the rubrics and the evaluation key that we use before the contest results happen practice giving and receiving feedback that can be hard for students um, if they've never really, you know, it's different when it's from your teacher sometimes or your educator than kind of a stranger. So practicing with peers, practicing giving um, feedback from yourself can be really helpful when the contest occurs. If students are creating websites, be sure they create them in the NHD editor, NHD Web Central. And if you have questions, your coordinators are there for you. Um, we're here to help you navigate this. It can be really overwhelming sometimes when you're new to this. And we want to make sure that you have a good experience, your students have a good experience, and you don't have all these mysteries just kind of floating around. So please email us when uh, you have questions. History Day in the classroom. Teachers um, across the country implement NHD in lots of different ways. 
This is not a one size fits all and that's okay. Semester or year long programs, entire classes or small groups, uh, history clubs that meet after school, uh, required class project or extra credit, enrichment programs, an individual teacher doing this, or sometimes a team teacher, a team teaching approach where maybe you're pairing up with the theater teacher at your school or the tech teacher at your school. Things to remember, the rule book is for the contest, not the classroom. So history day will look like what it needs to for your classroom and your students. If you are implementing this on the first year and not intending on going to the contest, it's totally fine. Take pieces of history day, implement it and see if it's something that works for you. And maybe next year your goal is to enter students into the contest. The first year it's just getting a handle of what a project could look like in your classroom. Diet Coke history day is still history day. And whatever your level of participation is, please let me know. I would love to be able to know what you're doing with your students with this framework and resources and how I might be able to help other teachers know some of the options that exist out there for them. Um, it, I really like to encourage team teaching. One of the big questions I get is, how do I do history day without completely consuming my entire life? And uh, my answer to that is get help, get other people to do this with you. Get an ELA teacher on board who wants to work with you on the written components those pieces like your annotated bibliography or your process paper or the language in their exhibit boards. There's lots of ways you can share the workload with other educators and it ends up benefiting everybody. Some ways to get started, you can consider limiting categories like maybe you just let students do website or paper your first year. Um, limit your topics. Maybe they look at your state standards for the year and they highlight some that's not interesting to them and dig into that and you're limiting it to just the content of your classroom or maybe even your first semester's standards. Limit your group size as much as they are best friends in the whole wide world and they want to work together. Maybe just say we're only doing groups of three um, so that five students aren't getting lost in the in the voice there. Uh, and making the contest an optional component. Maybe it's an after school program that you do with uh, some students that choose to participate in it. Um, remember, the contest isn't mandatory and you are limited in how many students you can bring to your regional contest. So if your goal is to bring a lot of your kids, spread them across the categories. Um, and we have a lot of resources with you to help you get started on this. One of them is the Padlet page you can see there, down there at the bottom. It changes quite frequently. We try to keep that up to date as well as our website. Um, and so checking there for new things that are posted um, can be a good way to get started. So some general contest information. All Northeast students must participate in the district contest before advancing to the East Regional Contest. All students must participate in the regional competition before advancing to state. And educators and schools are limited on the number of entries they can submit in each district and region. So online registration is required for each teacher and student participating at all levels of the contest. Um, for if you have questions about how many are allowed at each uh, competition, reach out to your regional coordinator and they can kind of get you plugged in and uh, get you the answers that you need. You see our kids down there at the national competition a few years ago, and that's in Maryland. So this is what NHD looks like in Tennessee. We have two districts in the Northeast, you see districts one and two, and the finalists from there advance to the contest that happens in the green region there in East Tennessee. We have Southeast in blue, middle in yellow, North middle is orange, and then that kind of salmon pink is West Tennessee. Uh, we had about 118 teachers participate in general across the last couple of years. And, um, about 7,000 students in the state of Tennessee participate in History Day. So take some notes here. Uh, we are gonna look through the different regions. So you know who to reach out to to get plugged in. Northeast District uh, 1, so those counties there. Your coordinator is Peter Knoll. He is at Tusculum. And your contest for this year is Friday, November 19th. It is, it is going to be virtual. So we do know that districts one and two are going to be virtual contests, um, but 
he is still your coordinator for that. So, and then district two, if you are in those counties there, your coordinator is Natalie Sweet. She is at Lincoln Memorial University. We'll hear from her later in the series. And uh, your contest is the same day, November 19th, 2021. East Tennessee region, if you are um, from Northeast one and two and you move on to this contest, or if you are in one of those listed counties, this is where you will start the contest series. Uh, your coordinator is Lisa Oakley, helped by Layla, who is with us today. Uh, your contest date is Friday, March 4th, 2022, and it will take place at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, fingers crossed. Southeast Tennessee, so those counties there, your coordinator is Allie Thomas at Lee University. We don't have a date just yet, but it will take place at Lee University in Cleveland, Tennessee. There's her email. North Middle is uh, hosted by um, Dr. Andrew Patrick and Dr. Keisha Brown at Tennessee State University. Your contest will be Friday, February 18th, 2022. Middle Tennessee, your coordinator this year is Dr. Molly Taylor Polsky. She, um, her email is there and your contest is Friday, February 25th, 2022, hosted by MTSU for those counties you see there. And then West Tennessee for all of those counties, your coordinators are Dr. Susan O'Donovan and Daniel Clark. Their emails are there. Your contest date is Saturday, February 26th, 2022, and it is hosted by the University of Memphis. And then our state contest date, if you move on from the regional contests, um, your date is April 2nd, 2022, and it will take place in Nashville at the State Capitol Complex um, at various uh, spaces we have around Capitol Hill. That is my email there, historyday at tennesseehistory.org. Once again, my name is Nikki, and um, those are some of the links to our websites. I think Tori has thrown a couple of those in the chat for you. I did want to show you, this is our Discover Tennessee History webinar page. So this is where all of us will be putting our resources after we uh, get to speak with you guys. So this is where you will go to see um, this series. And this is what we have for you for um, our educators in Tennessee. So um, theme resources here. They have a really great graphic organizer this year to help kids wrap their minds around the theme for the year. Uh, we have a theme video put out by NHC. The rule book, significant rule changes. If you would like a hard copy of those things, you just fill out this request form and uh, ignore that date there. I'll, I'm still sending them out. Getting started, NHD did a really great series here, some Tennessee topics, and then rubrics. I didn't go over this in our um, slideshow, but the rubrics, they're actually giving us new ones. They made some changes after some feedback from last year. So this is what we had last year but it's a general idea of what these look like. So this is how students are, um, how their work is analyzed by judges and the feedback they will receive. So these rubrics are really helpful for students to grasp the language surrounding History Day, to self-reflect on their work. We made um, instructional rubrics for students to kind of break down each section and really dig into what each section is asking of them. When we get the new rubrics evaluations for this year, I'll redo those for you as well. And that's what I have for you. So what questions do you guys have? If any. No questions, awesome. Well, I know that's a lot. Um, and like I said, history day is what it looks like in your classroom. That's the important thing to remember. Um, so the key thing is the quality of research. If your first year, the idea of going to a contest is overwhelming, focus on implementing it in your classroom in some way, digging into that research, and then have a goal of bringing some kids to the contest next year. Um, if you have questions, reach out to me. I'm happy to, to help you.
Well, thank you, Nikki. Um, and of course, um, I know from people I've talked to over the years, uh, you know, again, just getting started sometimes is, is the hardest part. So uh, I think, yeah, like you said, if, if people just want to kind of try it out in their classroom, see what happens, um, you know, it's, it's definitely a learning experience as you're getting started. So with the, the Padlet page, we have added in some of the links that Tori have shared. And of course, uh, Nikki, you can continue to add to that if you guys have other things you would like to see um, on that Padlet from today's session. Um, let me pull up and just again, remind you again, the link for that. Um, you can access here um, or through that QR code. So um, if you're interested in getting PD credit for uh, participating with us today or watching this recording later on, um, you can find that here um, at this link. Um, and we'll also drop this into the, uh, the chat box as well. Um, and if you have uh, any questions, just let us know. We will send out PD certificates, uh, usually about a week or once a week um, on this survey. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. Uh, we hope to see you again next month.